Hi there and welcome to Tech Tuesday. Today we're decrypting CAN communication. What is it and how can it benefit you? As everyone's aware, modern cars are full of computers. Computers to control the engine, computers to control the gearbox, uh, the power windows, the airbags and the power steering. Computers even control the rear vision mirrors in some cars. With all these computers and sensors, you can imagine what the wiring harness could look like and how crazy things could get when each of these computers are trying to get information with the same sensors. They'd be wiring everywhere. This is where the CAN communication system comes into its own. CAN bus, or a controller area network bus, is a standardized communication method which allows devices from different manufacturers to communicate and share information. But there's two pieces of the puzzle here. The ability to communicate, so the CAN bus itself, and the CAN protocol, the language the device speaks. The CAN bus is standardized, while the CAN protocol is free for manufacturers to use pretty much however they want. In our industry, the goal is to get all the devices communicating in harmony in order to reduce the total number of devices, sensors, and wires in a car, while allowing each computer full access to the information it requires. Think of it this way, as humans, we've got the telephone, which allows us to call a known phone number and contact a specific phone anywhere in the world. Think of this as the CAN bus. And it's the wiring connection between the devices. Once we've made the phone call, we then need to know the language of the person that picked up the phone on the other end and be able to interpret it. Then reply in a language that they can understand. This is the CAN protocol. And that's it. Now I can call a person on the other side of the world and share information. I might even invite a friend to listen in on the conversation and take notes. That'll be my data logger. Or organize a conference call and have 10 people listening in and contributing to the discussion. That's a full CAN network. This is just how the CAN bus works. There's two wires named CAN high and CAN low, or sometimes referred to as the backbone of the system, which connect each of the computers together. Each device connected to the network can broadcast and receive information whenever it requires. In, in a very basic example, we have an engine management system that broadcasts all the engine data. Things like uh, engine RPM, manifold pressure, uh, throttle position, uh, road speed. There's tons of channels available. Then, connected to the CAN bus, we'd have a dashboard like any of these. We'd simply need the dash to know the language or CAN protocol that the ECU speaks. And hey presto, the dash can now display all the ECU information and anything that's on the CAN bus. In the same fashion, this method allows ECU expansion in both factory and aftermarket applications. Instead of the ECU controlling a fuel pump directly and running thick, high current wires through the car, we'd have a CAN device next to the fuel pump which controls the pump speed. The fuel pump controller would then be connected to the CAN network and would be looking for information on the CAN bus to determine if it should turn on or turn off or at what pump duty cycle it should be operating at. Likewise, to add things, uh, maybe eight EGT, exhaust gas temperature sensors. That's something that's not always convenient to add into a base engine management system as they chew up a lot of ECU connector pins, they add cost to users that don't often need them, and it's not very convenient to run eight EGT wires all the way back to the engine management system. So a standalone EGT input device is employed to get that data onto the CAN bus. You just Add the modular device to the CAN network, plug the sensors in, and you're ready to go. It's modular and it's easy to connect. To add things to the CAN bus is pretty straightforward. Join CAN high to CAN high. Join CAN low to CAN low. All our Haltech devices are sold using a DTM4 connector to allow plug and play flexibility, but you don't need to use our Haltech CAN hub if you don't want to. Um, think of these like an electrical power board or a double adapter. Um, there's no magic inside these boxes. They're just a, a neat way to add things simply. If you prefer, you can just join the wiring in the harness, wh whatever's easiest for you. The one trick in the wiring is there needs to be 60 ohms of resistance between the CAN high and CAN low wires. This is normally taken care of in the devices connected to the network, which normally have the ability to turn a terminating resistor on or off in order to achieve this total resistance of 60 ohms. 
I hope this has shed some light on the subject of the CAN network and helped to understand why using W brand dash with X brand ECU with Y brand input expander with Z brand power distribution module isn't too crazy or out of the question. As always, thanks very much for watching. My name's Scott, catch you next week.